up you guys it's Lexi DIY and welcome back or welcome to my channel if it's your first time here today we are doing such a fun video we are going to be going over how I renovated my laundry room floors now my entire laundry room renovation will be in a separate video because I really wanted to make sure I answered all the questions I got about these floors on TikTok. The video actually has like 7 million views, which is totally insane. And I had a bunch of questions, so I wanted to give a more in-depth video on how I did it. And I think that this is a really affordable option if you want to renovate, but you're on a super tight budget because these floors only cost me $170. So if that interests you, make sure to keep on watching. For reference, this is the linoleum in our laundry room that we started out with. All of the trim was that just not my vibe brown wood color. So I started off by just going ahead and cleaning it out really well. Even though I cleaned it out really good, you can still see that the floor just looks hideously dirty. I probably should have cleaned it with some TSP, so if you're doing this, I recommend doing that, but I kind of skipped that step. Um, you might also want to pull up your linoleum. I did not, and the reason being is I was a little nervous that there might be asbestos under there didn't really want to take that chance so anyway i am taking off the little quarter rounds or the shoe molding here i won't be taking off the full baseboards just because i do plan to put some new shoe molding here if you don't have the quarter rounds or the shoe molding and you don't want to add it i would recommend going ahead and taking off your baseboards before you start this project and labeling them so that you know exactly where they go back um, in this video, I didn't show you, but I did paint this entire room and the baseboards. More on the full renovation coming a little bit later this week, but I wanted to do an in-depth video on this specific topic because I got 7 million views on TikTok with this video and I had so many questions, so I wanted to answer them all in a longer YouTube video. I started by going ahead and taking my tiles and laying them out. Now, generally you would start from the middle of the room so that you can see where your eye would look when you walk in. I did it not necessarily in the middle of my room because I knew that in the back right corner that my laundry units were going to be there. So I started from where my eye would go. And then once I had that figured out, I kind of started off. Now you're gonna see me actually start from the wall. It's because when I did lay them out, some of my tiles perfectly fit against the wall, which made it a lot easier for me. So I would recommend not starting from the wall unless you've already laid out your tiles and you know that it's going to look good and you're not going to have a bunch of little tiny cuts. So I just started taking my peel and stick tiles, taking the backing off, and I used some stick and stay and this little... Um, I guess I would call it a spreader, I don't know, to go ahead and put that on the back. Now, that's not required. I feel like it made my tiles stick so much better. I have had no issues with them moving around. You do need to let it dry. I did let them sit for 24 hours, um, but I think it helped a lot. And then I'm just putting my tiles down and I'm putting my spacers in. I use 1 16th inch spacers and I probably went through like four bags. I wish I would have got like probably five or six bags, but it's totally fine. So my room is a five by nine room and I used about four and a half boxes of these tiles. And I, you can see I'm using that tile roller as well. Basically that just puts more pressure on it so that it can, you know, like stick down. That's not necessary either, although I would highly recommend it. I got it because I'm gonna be doing these and some other tiles in a lot of other rooms in my house. So next day, I'm just doing the same thing. Now, if you need to pull up your linoleum, that's totally fine. I didn't just because, again, our house was built in 1970. I was a little bit worried about asbestos. I didn't really wanna have to deal with that. 
Um, and I did have room for my doors to open. If you don't have room for your doors to open, I would not suggest going directly over the floor, although you can do whatever you want. Um, once I got down to like the bottom of my stick and stay, I had to use a plastic spoon to get it out because my little like float thing wouldn't fit down in there. But you can just see that I'm spreading it across and it is kind of like textured so that it creates like a little bond for the floor. I'm wiping off the edges and I just put any extra stick and stay I had directly on the floor. Somebody on TikTok actually suggested that you just put the stick and stay directly on the floor and then pop the tile on top. And I would say that in my next project with these, I'm definitely going to do that because I do think it would go a little faster. Again, I'm just putting the spacers in. I did have to use a lot more just because they're hexagon tiles, but they actually have these in a uh, rectangular form as well. They have so many different options and they look really great. Um, you just need an even surface. So here I am. I actually ran out of those first tile or the first spacers and you're going to see me use some other ones here because they didn't have any of the ones I was using left. So I ended up actually just picking some up from some of my other tiles that I had done the day before that were already dried and like in place and using those because as you can see these little rubber spacers weren't it so I, I wanted to show this because I highly recommend going with the plastic spacers that aren't like flexible like these little rubber ones because those didn't work too good for me. Now, for any of the cuts, I just measured it out and I went ahead and scored it with my X-Acto knife. I'm using this already cut tile just because it had fit perfectly and I had a few that went along the same wall. And then I just snapped it off. It's super, super simple to do these. Now, the only thing is that I didn't show any of like the trickier cuts because they were a little bit frustrating. I would suggest using a paper template for that and having a few extra tiles on hand because I did mess up a few, but I kept those little corner cuts that I cut cut off to use on other parts. Honey, you're crushing it. You're good. Look, look at him not stepping on the tiles. An icon, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we love to see it. We love to see it. Oh. As you can see, we actually go through this room a lot so it was kind of difficult because we take our dogs out this way so it is a project that's going to take you not necessarily a few days like it's going to take you time over the course of a few days because it does have to dry and like the grout has to dry and set but I would say total, it probably took me like 10 to 12 hours of actual work, but it was totally worth it. So anyway, after they had set, I went ahead and took out all the spacers. You can see at some of like the little corner pieces, I put like a crystal or a brick over it just to make sure that those pieces didn't pop up because they were smaller. And now I am using my vinyl tile grout and I am just spreading it into the little seams and then I'm wiping away the excess with a very damp sponge. I did have to change the water probably like four or five times and at first I was going in smaller sections because I was scared that the grout was going to dry but I found that I could do it in larger sections and go over like five or six tiles at a time without it being like too difficult to take up with my damp cloth. Now the edges, again, they look messy now, but remember, I'm going to put the shoe molding back over it. So if you're not going to add shoe molding or quarter rounds, you definitely want to take it, uh, take your baseboards off so that you don't get a bunch of like yucky looking edges. Um, also I was just really careful around my little like vent opening because obviously I didn't want my grout to fall down my vent. This was actually my favorite part of doing the floors because it was like very satisfying. It did take like two or three hours to do this part but honestly I kind of loved it other than the fact that my hands were kind of getting like pruney because you know my hands were like going in and out of the water but this makes the peel and stick tile look like real tile like we had somebody come into our house um like one of our contractor friends and he was like what what kind of tile is this like he was confused that it was peel and stick and he was like it looks 
good because, you know, we actually like did the grouting and stuff. And I got a lot of comments on TikToks on TikTok from people who actually install flooring and they said that this is the absolute best way to install your peel and stick to keep it staying down. So I highly recommend using the stick and stay and grouting them because it looks so much more professional. Also, um, this is renter friendly if you do it without the stick and stay and without the grout, but I would recommend that you ask your landlord or your management office before you do anything like this. Again, if it's in a renter friendly place, like if it's in your rental, do not use the grout, do not use the stick and stay because I don't think that that will come up well when you try to bring it up. Once the grout had dried for about 24 hours, it's safe to have some light foot traffic on. So that's when I went ahead and put the new vent cover over. I couldn't find a black one, which I initially was gonna go with, but I think the white one looked actually really good. Then I just cleaned up some of the baseboards with some caulking because there was some separating because it is kind of just an old house. And then I measured out my shoe molding. I went ahead and cut it to size just with some miter shears instead of using a circular saw. And then I went ahead and was waiting for my air compressor. So I started dancing and just being silly, whatever. Um, and then I just brad nailed these shoe moldings onto the wall. You can definitely use quarter rounds, whatever you want. And this step is optional if you just want to remove your baseboards. Um, after that was done, I went back and I just went over the seams with some caulk and like my finger and a damp paper towel to make it look like a professional finish. And just as a reminder, this is what I was working with in the beginning. And this is what it looks like now. Such a huge difference and it only cost me $170. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch my video. Let me know what you guys think about uh, the peel and stick floors down in the comments below. I know a lot of people on TikTok loved it and a lot of people were not happy that I did peel and stick flooring over the linoleum. So let me know what your take is. Please be kind. Uh, all opinions welcome, but just be kind to everybody. And there will be a video on either Tuesday or Wednesday of my full transformation of the laundry room. You guys won't believe what it looked like before and after. It's such a huge transformation, so make sure to stay tuned for that. Hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you never miss when I upload next. And make sure to follow me on all my other socials. They'll be linked in the comment or in the description below, as well as my Amazon shop, which will have a bunch of things linked that I use to renovate the house or that are actually decor in my house. And I do make a small commission if you purchase from there, so please don't feel obligated, but I just wanted to let you know that it is there in case you had any questions on things that I was using during the entire process. So I love you guys. Thank you so much. And I will see you next time. Bye.